In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Creality K1 Max and answering that big question, should I buy one? Let's get straight on into it. You are watching a master at work. In a world where technological advancements are really just the norm, it's actually quite rare to be taken back by a piece of innovation. We often assume and make comments only to be humbled by the realization of our inaccuracies. The Creality K1 Max shattered some of my preconceived notions, leaving me really searching hard to point out its flaws. So at first glance, the standard K1 appears promising, standing on a good level among its counterparts. But it's really the K1 Max that really rises above, an awe-inspiring monster product meticulously crafted and infused with divine purpose. Its price, design, and construction really does align in harmony, creating a symphony of engineering excellence. In my quest to find flaws, I stumbled only across a few points. The K1 Max stands unyielding, triumphant over any potential criticisms. Even the contentious open source issues have been hushed by the announcement of its arrival in September. And on that point of open source, as bewildering as it may sound, Creality's roadmap stated that they were going to open it up eventually anyway, which follows suit with the Sonic Pad. While sometimes the manufacturing process may seem questionable, I do safely believe that the Creality K1 Max is the best that Creality have ever done. And in the realm of pre-built fast Core XY printers, the K1 Max stands unparalleled, heralding a new era for the Creality brand. It beckons us to reevaluate what we thought was possible and challenges us to embrace the unknown. But should you buy one? Well, let's look at the stats. But just before that, I'd like to thank my sponsor today, PCBWay.com. For the past 12 months, PCBWay has been a proud and trusted sponsor of the channel. They've been supporting countless makers throughout their creative journeys, offering expertise in various areas like 3D printing, circuit board manufacturing, CNC machining, and of course, injection molding. When it comes to outstanding manufacturing needs, PCBWay are simply the best in the business. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Let's get back to the Creality K1 Max. Both the K1 and K1 Max share similar specifications in terms of speed and performance. They both boast a capacity of 600mm per second on the print speed and 32mm squared on the hot end flow rate. However, the Max stands out due to its larger build volume, measuring an impressive 300x300x300, 300 by 300 by 300, which is considered an ideal size for 3D printing in this vast world of possibilities. The Max's design is truly striking, featuring a tinted flat glass panel on the front and top, complemented by a sympathetic Perspex panels. While both printers offer auto bed leveling, the Max goes a step further with AI capabilities. This includes print fail detection and LiDAR technology, which scans the initial layers of the print, providing feedback and alerting you if issues arise. Mid-print problems can also be detected, and during my testing I found that the foreign object detection feature was particularly helpful in certain printing scenarios. So as I previously said and spoke about open sourcing, both printers are based on Clipper firmware, and it's worth noting that come September we can expect to witness significant advancements in the Mac's capabilities, promising exciting possibilities for the future. Of course, with that being said, a lot of that feature-rich goodness is going to be very much down to the community and their input into the source code. So what else is there to mention? Well, the build plate is pretty exceptional. Usually I like to use a PEI sheet, and I use that across the range of printers that I've got in the studio, but this one is actually pretty good, and that's in terms of printing on and releasing thereof. I do use 3D Lac on the plate, so for whatever reason, it works really, really well. So on the back of the printer, there is an air purifier, and that basically purifies any unhealthy compounds generated during the printing process. What the effectiveness of that is, well, I'm not entirely sure of, but they put it on there, so it must do something, right? So there really is a ton of positives, but what are some of the negatives? What about the issues that the K1 originally had, like the hot end and the extruder? Well, interestingly enough, and we saw it in the K1 video that I produced as well, there's a gasket the Creality have now put in between the extruder and the extruder motor. And what we end up with is a buildup of heat that's transferred between the two metal elements. And that's the motor heating up the extruder, which is causing a blockage with the PLA. Now that's one of the reasons why it says on the top, if you are printing in materials such as PLA to remove the glass top. So as you can hear at the moment with the top off, the ambient noise in the room actually really isn't that bad. But I think when the print actually gets going and the fans kick in, it might become slightly more unbearable. So if you're doing things like editing and recording videos inside that ambient room, this possibly might be a problem for you. And just to show you how much of a difference it really makes with the top on, let me prove it. So fortunately, that was only a 16 minute benchy, but just to close this off, 
the heat transfer between those two metal elements, the buildup of heat from the motor has caused some issues with these gears. Then that's why you have the gasket that's been put in between it. But it still does mean that you have to take the top off the printer and that might be a problem for you. It's still an insane print though, 16 minute entry. So back to that main question, should you buy one? And I think really we're at that stage now with fast Core XY printers where size really does matter. The K1 Max delivers on size and print quality, certainly on the machine that I have here. I've been super impressed with it. This purchase for you is very much gonna come down to a number of limiting factors. One, the build size requirement, and two, the current lack of additional features like multi-material or multi-colors. But even in those instances, the various forms are still closed source or have part enforcement. So I think in the end, what you're going to find is this is gonna be very much like the way that the Ender 3 played out, where the users like to play and modify. Creality opening up this really lends well into the community modifying for the greater good. So hopefully this video in some way, shape or form has managed to convince you to either or otherwise buy one of these printers. Now, if you have bought one, let me know in the comments below. I've also got a discount code. And don't forget as well, if you put your unique serial number of the printer into the Creality Cloud, it will give you a year's free premium membership as well, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, we've got some discounts down below. There is a link down below as well, which is an affiliate link. So once again, thank you to PCBWay.com for sponsoring this particular video and also to Creality and the Creality team for sending me this printer out and the other two as well. Guys, um... This isn't over yet. We're going to keep moving forward with this. I think this is a printer that's really got some traction. So keep it logged in. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, like, subscribe, the comments going below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.